Uh, as you can probably all guess, viewers, I'm sorry to say, but Adam and I are in boring regular folding chairs. Lame or bad. Um, so. But you cis males. So. How dare you. <laughs> uh, what I've done instead is I've supplied each of us with a banana. Uh oh. Comedy's so we'll, about to happen. We'll have no, you a didn't. What? We don't have bananas. No, us. You guys have fancy chairs. We're the chair. We we're chair boys. We are, we are chair poor, so we're banana rich. I want a banana. Whoa! You see that trick that Lawrence just Wait, did? Wait, I lost it. I lost it. Ow! Ow! Mmm, delicious food. Ah! Just like the food that you get at Blue Apron. Why would you tell me to do that? That hurts so bad. Blue Apron sponsored this episode of Open House, and we're going to hear more from them at the end of the show. Thank you, Blue Apron. Nice and cold. It feels good on my neck. Your first question this week comes from a uh, half-sorted half mess. The year is 2050, and the Star Wars franchise hits its 100th movie. With every possible plot line already explored, what do you do to reinvent the franchise? I say you turn Luke Skywalker into a young Harry Potter. And then you're rebooting the Harry Potter franchise okay. oh. with Star Wars. And there's no way everybody in the world won't see these movies. Star Potter. They'll make 100 billion trillion dollars. Harry and Luke, both both orphans. And they both love Asian women. Wait, he married Ginny, though. He didn't love her. Yeah, but he fingered Cho Chang. Bang. Nice. Expect a Patronum. Well, Bruce, I have I have one thing that can beat the revenue of your Star no. Wars cross Harry Potter. Yes. And that's, uh, by the 100th movie, we'll have 100 characters. So it's time for Star Wars Battle Royale. Throw them all into one movie. We got magic. We got lightsabers. We got Ewoks. We got whatever the fuck they're going to come up with for the next stupid movie. It's gonna be great. Pork's probably gonna win. I'm gonna take it up a notch then. <gasps> oh, here we go. I'm ready. So every successful franchise and reboot, uh, Ghostbusters, gets better when you make everyone a woman. Oh, you're right, like Ocean's 8. Yeah, so everyone in the Star Wars universe is recast as a woman. <sighs> Death Star blows it up because everyone's busy scissoring on tattoos. Yeah, they are. Matt Peek, how do you make Star Wars franchise bigger than it's ever been? Well, we could always check in on Noah and Sindel, see what they're up to. Next question from Mooing Assassin. Dear Funhouse, yesterday I took spoonfuls of cake icing, then dipped the spoon into a Cocoa Puffs bag and ate whatever stuck to the spoon. What's the fattest thing you've ever done? Um, when I was in college, I had a big drawer at my desk that had a, like, Costco-sized peanut butter in it. And sometimes I would take a big spoon and I'd scoop up as much peanut butter as possible and I'd put it in my mouth and then I'd see if I could swallow it without chewing, like a bird. Peanut butter is really good for you and you learn how to deep throat. Both of those things. My mom used to work, uh, late shifts. She would work in patrol in the streets of West Hollywood. And she'd bring me back uh, Chinese fried rice. Oh. And I'd always eat it late at night, but I thought it was a little dry, so then I would smother it in ranch. Mm. Oh, ranch boy, fried oh rice, huh? Speaking of ranch, uh, <laughs> I had some pretty legendary uh, Fridays when I was in high school, because I had my own car and could feed myself whatever I wanted. Yeah. By the way, they were Wednesdays, but the food <laughs> was fried. <laughs> I recall I'd stop off at 7-Eleven for the double gulp. That's a yeah. huge soda. Then I'd swing by McDonald's. But don't worry, I got me one of the mixed salad shakers. It's like the cups that you just dump all the dressing in and shake it so it tosses That's itself. That's healthy salad. Yeah, except that by the time I got through the lettuce layer, it was just like cheese and meat and ranch dressing and then like this poultice at the bottom of the cup. That was the best part, because you take a little bit of that, then you knock back some sugary soda. You know, the pairing back and forth is what makes it a fun experience. But salad is good for you. Made me the body I have today. You guys remember the quad down? Oh, I'm sorry, the double down at KFC? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I had a quad down, which is you put a double down on top of a double down and then I ate that whole thing together. And I believe it sapped all the moisture out of my body, and I <laughs> don't remember urinating for about for 18 hours, I want to say, which I was very worried about. My lips are all dry. My every, it was really bad. It was a terrible thing to do, and I'll never do it again. I heard during the Let's Play Live tour when Achievement Hunter bet me $100, I couldn't drink all that Papa John's yeah. uh, garlic What a stupid sauce. bet. What idiots. Yeah, they yeah. drank that sauce, gulped it down, told them to keep their money. <laughs> Bitches! <laughs> and then she did it again. And get me more sauce. She <laughs> screamed. That did for fun. Matt Peak, you're never, you've never been fat. I don't think your entire life. So what's the fattest thing you've mm. In college, a few times I made egg of waffles, and then I put uh, ice cream in between two of them. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, dude, sounds real good. Proceeded to melt and soak in. Yeah, that's Oof. rad. That Common place. Weird. When I was five, I invented the Dorito sandwich. Two slices of bread with Doritos in between. You should try it. Every five-year-old's done that. Well, in elementary school, they had the really shitty cheesy bread, where it wasn't quite pizza. It was just bread with like. 
kind of shitty cheese on top. Yeah. So we would just pour ranch on top. <laughs> yeah, everything's <laughs> ranch, ranch every with you. time. I realized yeah. as I was saying it. Yeah, <laughs> with you. Hey, group eating a lot of ranch. Well, on the flip side of that, Alex two five one zero with summer right around the corner. I need the Funhouse exercise mm -hmm. video yeah. to help me get ripped fast. What new workout should I do to have a banging summer bod? Uh, there is intermittent fasting, which uh -huh. I think you guys have heard about, where you you fast for what is it, twelve hours or eighteen hours? Lawrence mm -hmm. has been trying to do it. Yeah. I think what you do. You don't do an intermittent fast, you fast for 30 days. You fast for 30 days, basically as long as you can survive without like food. It yeah. ends up being, it's like three weeks to a month, I think you can survive without food. Yeah. Um, and then it's right before you die, literally right before you die, you're in a hospital bed, you just have them uh, plug in an IV with some nutrients and you'll be fine. Um, I'm on a, uh, a newer diet. It's kind of, it's, it's catching on. Kids are getting into it. It's called the Blair Witch Diet. Oh. Yeah, you go out into the woods and get lost for about, 12 days they were out there, okay. right. roughly, give or take. You disappear because you, at the very end, you see your best friend in the corner staring and then your kid, you fall over. But, <laughs> like, you lost at least 30 pounds of water weight. Yeah, especially from the tears. I got five words for you, kiddos. Blood flow restriction. <laughs> <laughs> he, he you got tie me, these bands he got around, me to around your limbs, and then you do a this bunch is... of reps, and it causes the blood to flow into your muscles. It's a real up, thing. It's all like real. Out. Also, you get all veiny, don't you? You get all veiny, right? Yeah, you get fucking shredded. But you're only lifting like 10 pounds. But I'm saying what you do is you get flesh-colored ones all over your body. Get them on your neck, oh. get them on either arm, on your legs, it works on your legs, and get yourself a good pump, then go to the beach. Take off that shirt, people don't realize you you're a monster. <laughs> you're all pumped up <laughs> on blood flow restriction. Um, we have a lot of female mannequins around the front house office. We do for Too some many. reason. Like, Where a do they lot. All come and like from? Adam can speak to this. Like sometimes like she likes to be by the window. Sometimes she likes to be like agree. in the in our office so she mm -hmm. can like see what we're doing. So we gotta move her around a lot. She's not light, okay? Um, so, so wait, the doctor- Mannequin moving. The mannequin moving mannequin. is what yeah, we call it. Yeah, get yourself yes. a mannequin, raise diet. it, raise it. Yeah. Move it around like flowers. It's a workout. Uh, Matt Peak, what should we do to get ripped? They have those, like, shirts that you, like, tan with, and then it- You take the shirt off and it's, like, shaded. Like, looks like you have a six-pack and all your muscles are, like, Shaded because that's been darker. Did you ever see those plastic grates that you wear around your abs oh, yeah. that squeeze your fat on your belly right. into the shape of muscles? I like that. All right, Luke B. 1998 writes with the new God of War doing so well. Uh, which game series would you ruin next? I think what they do is they're rebooting Spyro, but what Spyro needs is a small, young lesbian companion dragon. I'm alright with that. I'm alright with the lesbian thing. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are thinking I'm about to say Battle Royale. Not. Okay. We we dive even further back in the catalog. We bring out the golden standard Tetris, but we give it the God of War treatment. Now you're the S or the Z block. Depends on which way you're looking at it. <laughs> and you got a little T block sun. You guys are looking to make a line. But how do you do that? You gotta travel all across the land meeting other kinds of Tetris blocks till you find the ones that really match up with you so you can erase yourself. It's about suicide. I'm gonna award. Uh, I don't know, paper boy. Well, how do you ruin it? Uh, everything's digital now. You have to do DLC transaction microtransactions to buy every newspaper that so you need to throw. So he just sends it like yeah. newsletters through email? You're the guy reposting the Daily Stormer article on Facebook so your racist uncle can take it off? Cool. <laughs> you guys, you forgot about the most important game of all time. Half-Life 3. Oh! You, you ruin that series by basically just making Half-Life 3. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna ruin the whole series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just make the game. It's like a 9.5 it out of 10. It all Kill all yourself. Ruined, ruined it. Ruined it. Yeah. Epic? Bioshock, so I want another Bioshock game. Well, how do you ruin it? Ruin it. it was called like, Prey, man. I was gonna say what you said. You just make it and people will complain. They'll probably yeah. make you carry around some young girl or something in it. Mm -hmm. Jado or Jado once. Two. The Infinity Gauntlet now has a socket on its palm oh. for a new Infinity Stone. What is the type of this stone and what are its powers? Uh, probably like a cool like red stone that you then Thanos then later realizes was just was just an M and M. Oh, um, and it's delicious. You could eat it though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. sustenance. So speaking of deliciousness, you say cool redstone, I say cool ranch, ranch stone. stone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you have all of the five powers and then the most delicious flavor of all, ranch, suck it's right in there. He snaps his fingers, all food become ranch dressing. Um, I was gonna say the lotion stone. So every time <laughs> you go to masturbate with the infinity gauntlet, <gasps> it just gives you lotion right away oh, like that's that. that's nice. But what is the, with the hand in the what? The uh, hand goes where? <laughs> 
<laughs> Someone explain to Elise how men masturbate. I don't want to. Uh, I would give him the keystone. It's a place where he keeps his fob for his uh, Prius. Uh, oh, that's cool. So then yeah. he goes to open the door. Well, it's right there. Thanos, because, uh, yeah, we saw the gauntlet. It's kind of busted or whatever. How does he get around? His 2007 Prius. He is uh, environmentally conscious, Whisper I appreciate drive. Well, yeah, well, he, he you know, well, he's yeah. only killing half the environment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he just puts a suck stone in there. So anything he opens his hand to, he can suck up in there. So, like, if he's hungry, oh, a slice of pizza. <laughs> Slice pizza goes into his hand. Mmm, I'm not hungry anymore. Is that how that works? Yeah. Uh, last question, Matt Peak. All right, from uh, what? Hey, Moon Moon Jin. Jin, Moon Jin, Moon probably. Jin. What's the last item on your bucket list? To hit the ground at maximum velocity. <laughs> <laughs> to be Luke Skywalker in the 2050 reboot of Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yes. Uh, to swim in a swimming pool full of ranch. Damn, it took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always imagine like in a bathtub shooting across the night sky. Like an Amblin Entertainment type thing, except instead of a kid and an alien, it's me on fire naked. All right. uh, I like to be blamed for a conspiracy theory. Like you're at the center of uh, it? Yeah. But like, because then you can't defend yourself, because once you're in it, you're in it. Yeah. And then, and then I die, and then people keep wondering and make like A&E documentaries about me of like, did he do it? Would you think it'd be better to die or or be alive like Paul McCartney, who's alive, and people are like, you're not Paul! <laughs> I'd rather be dead. Okay. <laughs> than be Paul McCartney. Oh. His wife had one leg. Uh, Matt Peake. I don't have anything. Do you, we'll, get, we'll get Matt Peake's answer right after this. Hello? This episode of Open House is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron is the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S., putting high-quality kitchen creations in the hands of anyone, no matter your culinary experience. Blue Apron offers convenient, fresh, and pre-portioned ingredients along with step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. A flexible menu ensures that each week you'll always have 12 new recipes to choose from. Every ingredient Blue Apron provides is high-quality and every recipe will be ready to eat in 45 minutes or less. Blue Apron provided me with a promo code to try their product. And I gotta say, I can't imagine going back to cooking regular meals. Having all the ingredients right in front of you is just so easy. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm learning new ways to cook. Last night I put some pieces of chicken, folded it up in foil, cooked it in the oven. I'd never tried that before, but thanks to Blue Apron, I found a new way to cook chicken and it's delicious. Blue Apron is treating open house viewers to $30 off your first order if you visit blueapron.com slash open house, that's H-A-U-S. So check out this week's menu and get your $30 off at blueapron.com slash open house. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. All right, Matt Peak. All right, I've always wanted to be a poison tester. All the good right. news is you only fuck up once. Kama Sutra, mm. because um, Kama Sutra is something that everybody needs to know. Yeah. Uh, and you also need to know, like Sting, how to not come yep. for three or four hours while Amen. having sex. How do you fail Kama Sutra class? You don't get laid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you come. <laughs> yeah, ever. <laughs> That's good. You fail that way too. Uh, I think we all know.